In this video, you'll learn the basic theory behind coupling in NMR. We'll start by reviewing the basics of how a signal is generated in the first place. First, we'll look at how a signal gets to its position on the x-axis. For nuclei with spin, there are two i plus one allowed spin states with integral differences of values ranging from minus i to plus i. Protons, for example, have a spin or i value of one half and can have spin states minus one half and plus one half. Their spin creates a magnetic moment mu. If you can imagine that I'm the nucleus, I could have a spin in one direction, plus one half, or in the opposite direction, minus one half. And by the right hand rule, that spin, caused by a spinning charged particle, creates a magnetic moment in one direction or in the other direction. Outside of a magnet, those magnetic moments point randomly in all directions. When we put a nucleus that has spin, I, into a magnetic field, such as the NMR spectrometer, the magnetic moments line up with or against the magnetic field. These nuclei also begin to precess about their own axis of spin with an angular frequency omega, called the Larmor frequency, or the resonance frequency. The stronger the spectrometer, the greater the resonance frequency of the proton. In fact, spectrometers are named for the approximate resonance frequency of protons in that spectrometer. In a 300 megahertz spectrometer, protons precess at about 300 megahertz, or 300 million cycles per second. Radio frequency waves are now supplied to the sample containing these precessing protons. This is the NMR experiment. If a radio frequency wave coming in matches the resonance frequency of the precessing nucleus, the nucleus will absorb that energy and flip its spin. The nucleus then flips back to its original spin and in doing so releases that resonance energy, which is captured by a detector. That resonance frequency is translated into a value of chemical shift. To do that, the resonance frequency of a reference sample, tetramethylsilane, called TMS, it's subtracted from the resonance frequency of the proton in question. The result is divided by the approximate resonance frequency of protons in that spectrometer. The result is a value called chemical shift, and the unit is parts per million, or ppm. Now let's talk about coupling. We will start with the example of the proton on screen. If there are no non-equivalent neighbors, that proton signal will be a singlet, one peak. If that proton is close enough to one non-equivalent neighboring nucleus with spin, so n for neighbor is equal to 1, the proton signal will be split. Simple coupling follows the n plus 1 rule, and so the proton signal will be a doublet. But why? Remember how the proton was affected by the spectrometer's magnetic field? A proton, or any other nucleus with spin, will also be affected by other nuclei around it that have a magnetic moment. If there's one non-equivalent neighbor, that proton neighbor might have spin one half, which results in a magnetic moment aligned with the spectrometer's magnetic field. The overall magnetic field experienced by the proton increases, so the proton's chemical shift will move to a higher frequency. The sample used in an NMR experiment comprises millions of molecules. Half of those molecules will have a neighboring proton with spin one half. The other half will have spin minus one half. The protons with spin minus one half have a magnetic moment opposed to the spectrometer's magnetic field. The magnetic field experienced by the proton is decreased, so the proton's chemical shift will move to a lower frequency. All these situations add together to make two peaks, or a doublet, with relative peak intensity of one to one, because there's equal probability of each situation. The magnitude of that coupling is called the coupling constant, J. This is the amount that a peak is shifted because of that neighboring proton. Coupling constants have been measured for many different coupling systems, meaning different types of nuclei at various bond distances. Three bond coupling constants, 3J, for linear aliphatic, meaning saturated alkyl systems, are of about 7 Hz. Coupling occurs as information is transmitted through bonds. This information can be transmitted through one, two, or three bonds quite readily called 1J, 2J, or 3J. Information can be transmitted through more bonds in other special situations. In this case, coupling occurred through three bonds, 3J. 
What if there were two neighboring atoms with spin? The first HA splits HB into a doublet. The second atom would cause each of the first two signals to split into two again by the same coupling constant of about 7 Hz. As the peaks in the middle overlap, they create a peak twice the height as the outside two. The result is a triplet with 1 to 2 to 1 relative peak intensity. Another way to get at this triplet answer is to analyze the possible combinations of spins for the two HA atoms. If both HA atoms have spin plus one half, HB will have the highest resonance frequency. Two combinations cancel out each other's effects, spins plus one half and minus a half, or minus one half and plus one half. Finally, if both HA atoms have spin minus one half, HB will have the lowest resonance frequency. In summary, the chemical shift of a nucleus represents the precessional frequency of that nucleus. The precessional, or resonance, or Larmor frequency, is affected by three things. The spectrometer's strength. The resonance frequency increases in a stronger magnet. Second, the electronic environment. Shielded protons have a lower resonance frequency. Deshielded protons have a higher resonance frequency. And third, non-equivalent neighboring nuclei with spin. When the magnetic moments are aligned with the spectrometer's magnetic moment, that increases the proton's Larmor frequency. The opposite situation decreases the Larmor frequency. Overall, the coupling follows the n plus 1 rule for simple situations where n is the number of non-equivalent neighboring nuclei. The distance between coupled peaks represents the coupling constant, j. The magnitude of this coupling constant is about 7 Hz for simple linear aliphatic systems.